Hello. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Kirill. Uh, you see this QR code. Uh, it's a link to slides for this presentation and uh, examples in GitHub repository. Uh, a few words about myself. Uh, I'm writing uh, Go code for about six years, and I'm software engineer for about 11 years. Uh, Last time I'm focusing on low latency applications and distributed systems like uh, trading systems, uh, payment solutions, and so on. Uh, so in this talk uh, we will speak uh, about uh, latency. We'll, it's more practical talk. Uh, there will be just a few of theory and more examples. Uh, we will analyze it with different tools and uh, try to optimize uh, some performance problems. Here is a standard disclaimer that uh, simple and readable code is much better than complex and unreadable. I think you understand that. And uh, you really have, need to have a good reason to optimize the code and not uh, algorithms and not uh, not business logic, because uh, quite often performance bugs uh, would be found in, uh, in the logic of application or in algorithms. So first, uh, what is the latency? According to Wikipedia, it's a time delay between uh, the cause and the effect. Uh, in our case, uh, on application level, we could say that uh, it's a time difference between uh, start and the end of some uh, function of a difference between uh, some event and reaction to event. Uh, the most known uh, common issues with performance and latency uh, is uh, input-output operations, it's synchronization, and uh, heap allocation. So today we, we will focus on the third one because uh, we have only 13 minutes, uh, so let's start. Uh, it is uh, one real-life example from my experience when I started uh, working on uh, some legacy project. I have found that uh, this line of code takes about 30% uh, of CPU time for garbage collection because uh, this update index function was executed a few million times per second and uh, it creates a uh, new allocation on each invocation uh, but the fix was uh, pretty simple just uh, set the value to the field instead of creating new memory and this is a list of tools I'm using for example sit uh, different GC flags like for escape analysis for disable inlining uh, getting uh, assembly code from binary. Of course, I really like this uh, Lensum tool to visualize assembly code and link it with uh, source code. Uh, I really like it and recommend it. Uh, so it is table of content we will discuss today. It's interfaces, generics, inlines, and uh, a few words about pointers. <coughs> Let's start with interfaces. Uh, quite often, uh, if you have a function with a interface parameter type, arguments for the parameters uh, could be moved to heap before passing uh, to this uh, function. Uh, you most probably know that uh, interface structure uh, has uh, has this uh, internal representation, it has a value pointer, and it has uh, some metadata like type and uh, functions. Uh, and even if you have a value type argument, then uh, it will be uh, converted to pointer before passing as, uh, as argument, except one cases where this value is less than uh, one word of uh, CPU. So it is a minimal reproducible example for heap escape. We have uh, x integer of uh, 256. I will explain this number on the next slide. 
and then we call println function, and uh, x integer escapes to heap here. Uh, and it is really hard to say for some cases uh, where exactly variable escapes to heap or not uh, with interfaces. For example, why did I choose this 256? Why we can't use just one, two, three, or something like that? Uh, because uh, one number doesn't escape. Uh, even if uh, escape analysis output report that both value escape to heap here, uh, if we go to assembly code and check that uh, how it uh, passed to interface function, we can see that it is converted with uh, conf t46 runtime function. And this runtime function implemented like that. It uh, takes the value and return the pointer of this value. And it has two main branches. First one is called when uh, this value is uh, less than static uins array. This uh, static uins array represents uh, some small number cache from uh, 0 to ff hex to 255. And uh, second branch uh, called uh, when the value is greater than uh, the size of this array. And in this case, we allocate new memory for it. Uh, so in this case, only, uh, sorry. In, the, in this case, only uh, the second value allocated. Yeah. Sorry, some synchronization issue between my screens. Okay, so uh, when we put uh, uh, a value like uh, integer 32 or integer 46, as a function argument, it could be not allocated to heap because uh, the size is less than uh, pointer size. Mm, but it happens not in every case. <coughs> uh, for example, uh, uh, here we have uh, Two, two calls to println function. And uh, we see that uh, in first case we just uh, call it one line and in second we declare a variable one to print it later. Uh, so in uh, first case it is really bypass heap allocation and uh, called uh, in the method called directly with this uh, argument. Uh, but in uh, second case uh, the variable converted uh, with this con t46 function before passing to argument. So it works only if uh, you don't have uh, some variable. So how to avoid allocation? First you need to understand if you really have it and you really need to fix it. And I mean that it really affects uh, performance in a bad way. Uh, let's see this example. We have an uh, inter interface similar to FMT Stringer, but with int. And we have a uh, simple implementation with uh, and just integer type. Then we have a function that uh, accepts uh, this interface parameter. For now, let's assume that we don't inline anything. We will discuss inlines a bit later. So, now we just uh, call this method on, on the interface type. Uh, 
So the most simple solution is to, is to declare a function for exact type of this parameter. Sometimes it is uh, working fine. For example, if you know zero log, uh, it uses this way to accept uh, parameters for logging messages. Uh, but uh, in some cases it's not very good from design perspective because uh, you have a lot of types for interface. You need to create uh, one function per type and uh, design could be very bad. Uh, but in this case, uh, you just put this integer argument into register and call this function directly without uh, passing it through the heap. Also, we can try using generic function. Uh, it has the same implementation as uh, interface. Uh, the only difference is uh, type. It is uh, T instead of uh, inter here. Uh, in this case, we don't have uh, allocation for generic too. Uh, as you can see, uh, the generic has uh, this int 46 shape. Uh, this shape is, uh, according to latest approved proposal for generic, uh, DC shape of a time means how it appears to allocator and garbage collector. So in our case, uh, this value appears like a value type integer. So compiler will not move it to heap. But uh, for some uh, other shapes, uh, the value could be moved to heap, for example, for pointer types or for st structures with pointers fields. Uh, and uh, this generic actually leads us to the next topic. It's inline optimizations, because uh, generic functions cannot be inline, because it always have uh, dynamic dispatch. It uh, uses virtual table to call uh, uh, parameter functions with interfaces. Uh, but uh, interface uh, function, uh, sorry, function with interface type parameter could be inlined and uh, performance of this function would be really good. This is a list of uh, inline rules for compiler that I took from Golan wiki pages. You can find them here. So if our function is small enough and doesn't have uh, doesn't have any complex statements like uh, defers, recovers, selects. It uh, doesn't have uh, special uh, uh, instructions for disabling inlinings. And it, if it has body, then uh, it could be inlined. Well, let's see at a simple uh, interface. It's uh, like calc with add method. It calculates uh, the total sum of, uh, of arguments. And uh, here is a simple implementation, it's just integer that uh, accepts uh, parameter to add and save it uh, into itself. Uh, and uh, now we will see the difference between uh, interface function to calculate the sum and generic function. When we have interface parameter, uh, here it's calc and we have varargs of uh, values to sum. Uh, and uh, if we call it like this, uh, we just create a variable of the implementation of calc and uh, uh, sum of all of these numbers. Uh, then uh, the, this function could be inlined. Uh, we can see that uh, we just initialize uh, implementation uh, variable with zero. Then uh, we initialize uh, var args with one, two, three. Uh, then I skip some range loop jumps. It's not relevant. And finally, we call implementation method on uh, on this calc implementation. But for generic function, we do exactly the same. Uh, we calculate the sum and uh, call it from main function. Uh, we don't see any in line. Um, we allocate uh, this implementation in a heap. And uh, then we perform uh, dynamic dispatch for calling implementation method. 
so here is a pros and cons for using different approach. Uh, if, uh, if you want to avoid heap allocation, you can uh, use these three solutions. Uh, if you use exact type parameter, then uh, you may have a bad design, but uh, you may avoid allocations at all, uh, and uh, this function could be inlined. Uh, if you have uh, interface type parameter, then uh, it could be inlined. And if it is inlined, then uh, you may also avoid allocation and avoid dynamic dispatch. For generics, it's a different story. It could not be inlined, but uh, it may not allocate uh, arguments for some uh, shapes. So the summary is uh, that quite often uh, small functions with uh, uh, interface parameter could be inline. So let, first, let's try just to compile and analyze if uh, maybe everything will be good without optimization. Uh, then uh, maybe you can try another design to make your uh, interface implementation simple enough to inline them. Uh, also, you can try generic functions. Uh, for some DC shapes, it is working well. And uh, also, you can use uh, exact type parameters for functions. So next topic is uh, about pointers. There are two main uh, problems with pointer. It, uh, if you assign a pointer to a field structure, and if you return it from a function. Uh, so if you assign it to a field like this, uh, have two methods. First, uh, takes the value from local scope of function, and uh, another takes it from outside. In both cases, uh, there will be heap allocation, just because uh, compiler cannot prove that uh, these uh, pointers uh, will not be used after after this, because uh, it says structure field. <coughs> uh, the most known solution for this is separate allocation and usage. So first you create a value, initialize all memory required for that, and then on a performance critical path you just call this method and use its pointer. Or if you prefer to pass pointer parameters, you can read the value of it and save it to the memory. Uh, for returns, if you put on uh, pointer type, it also produces allocation. Uh, instead of this, you can uh, create it with, uh, for example, new keyboard and set a value with a flyant method that returns itself, the receiver of the method, uh, and save or store it uh, in, uh, in the field. So when you uh, return any pointer. It could be one of uh, parameter pointer or a method receiver itself. Then it will be safe to return without allocations. Actually, types in uh, uh, math big package is a good example for performance uh, um, for performance types. It uh, designed for good performance. Mm, for example, here you see. We create a big integer, we assign values to it, uh, one, two, three, then we calculate the sum, uh, and uh, we return pointers, we use them, but finally we don't have any allocations in this code. Everything is calculated on stack. Uh, and uh, we can uh, create similar types. Uh, it is uh, just small integer, like big one, uh, first, we define a uh, type without, uh, without any pointers inside, uh, create the method to initialize it and return itself, and uh, add the method to change the state. Uh, also, we can, uh, if we really need to bypass location for field uh, assignment, for example, if we use uh, external library that uh, don't allow us to modify the code, uh, 
we can uh, use something else. For example, here uh, we have parent and child field, and we have a set child method uh, which moves uh, argument to the heap. You can see it allocates new memory for it. And we use one dirty hack. I took it from uh, Golan runtime sources. This no escape function, it breaks uh, the dependency for escape analyzer. Uh, after this function, uh, compiler cannot uh, know that uh, returned pointer depends on uh, parameter pointer. So when we call it, it will be placed on stack. You see there are no any allocations. Uh, but it could be really dangerous because uh, if, uh, if this uh, child will be used after parents' uh, stack frame, then you can get uh, unpredictable data inside it. So use it only in the same stack frame or deeper. Or maybe you can clean it after using like this with defer function. So the summary uh, is first to verify verify the escape analysis output because sometimes it uh, could be wrong. I'm thinking about it just uh, like a hint uh, which I need to prove that escape really happens there. Uh, uh, then uh, I'm using the rule that I allocate once and use uh, many times if needed. Return only external pointers, uh, method receivers or parameters. Uh, and I don't store pointers uh, from outside in my field structure. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Kiru. We have a couple of questions coming in. Uh, okay, about returning struct and returning interface. I prefer returning struct because uh, uh, interface uh, is more like a protocol for communication. Usually I'm using it for uh, function parameter types, not for returning types. Oh, there is about uh, would Go still be suitable language for low latency and uh, null save applications? I think uh, yes, because uh, if you have some latency problem, you just need to fix it in one place and you can uh, care about design more for all other places. So it's just a small part of application that uh, may use unsafe code. Should we use pass pointer pass by struct, considering that uh, passing by pointer avoid copying, uh, but at uh, indirection and negatively affect uh, one cache? I think it depends on your case, because uh, when you use uh, pointers, you have uh, more unpredictable latency. So if you need uh, more predictable, I would prefer returning structures and values. No. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thoughts on any recent memory Arenas experiment? Sorry, I didn't get it. Which experiment? Thank you so much. Okay, so while we let the next uh, speaker set up, I'm just